Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on vector calculus for electromagnetism. This is video number 44, or it's video number 3 in the subsection on the Helmholtz theorem. Specifically in this video, I'm going to prove part 1 of the theorem, or part 1 of the Helmholtz theorem. The previous videos to this which are relevant are numbers 40 and 41 where I discussed the Dirac delta function, 42 where I took the gradient of 1 over the magnitude of the separation vector, and 43 where I took its Laplacian. So there are quite a number of results from our previous videos which will require for this and this is quite an involved proof in that respect. So I've written five of the most important on the bottom left of your screen including this particular scalar product here or this, this, uh, this excuse me vector product here. So the first thing we need to note for the Helmholtz theorem is that it's fundamental for electro the study of electromagnetism. And the reason is, is because without it, we are stuck calculating everything using the electric and the magnetic fields on their own. And they're very difficult because both of them are vectors and have lots of components as a result. But with the Helmholtz theorem, we're able to then instead study the electric scalar potential, V, and the magnetic vector potential, A. Now, you might say to, you say to yourself that a, va a magnetic vector potential it doesn't make things much easier. But both put together, in actual fact, does make things easier. And without them, the study of electromagnetism would be a lot more cumbersome. So, now what we need to notice is that any function, let's say capital F function of R, can be written as a product of itself with the delta function. So bear with me just while I set up this particular integral here. So I'm sure you'll be able to accept and understand that the integral on the right hand side always gives us the function f of r. And the reason is because what we're doing is adjusting the value of r prime and only when r prime in actual fact equals r do we get a non-zero delta function and do we get back f a function of r. Now the reason this is useful is because we know plenty of things about the delta function. Specifically we know that if we take its the gradient of excuse me the, the Laplacian of 1 over the magnitude of the separation vector we get this formula here. So we can always bring in the delta function in that in, in that regard. So if we do that what we get is as follows we get minus 1 over 4 pi the integral over the volume f a function of r prime and then we're going to get the Laplacian of 1 over the magnitude of the separation vector integrated d tau prime. Alright, so that looks pretty straightforward. So the next thing we're going to do is just adjust this by rewriting it. So we have minus 1 over 4 pi, we have the Laplacian squared, or the Laplacian or grad squared, over the volume f a function of r prime d tau prime over the magnitude of the separation vector. Now you might wonder how come I can do that? Well the reason I can do that is as follows. The Laplacian only op uh, operates on the unprimed coordinates. In order for us to use a Laplacian that operates on the, on the primed coordinates, we can do that, but it costs us a minus sign. But because f is a function of r prime here, and not a function of the unprimed variables, we can bring out the Laplacian. Now, the next thing we need to do is involve the vector product here. So we note that if we have a Laplacian, we can instead use the gradient of the divergence minus the double curl, and that's what I'm going to do. So what we have is plus 1 over 4 pi, the gradient of the divergence, and this time we have the integral over the volume f a function of r prime d tau prime over the magnitude of the separation vector and we take away from that 1 over 4 pi 
the double curl and then we have our integral again now you might wonder yourself does that make things any easier and I'll tell you that it does because we actually get let's call this equation on the left 1 and the equation on the right 2 I'm going to tell you straight away that the equation on the left is going to give us the scalar potential and the equation on the right is going to give us the vector potential but in order to make life a bit easier I'm going to use the next video number 45 to discuss equation 2 and I'm just going to discuss equation 1 from now on so let's let's just rewrite this so equation 1 reads plus 1 over 4 pi the gradient of the divergence of the integral over the volume and we have our integral now just bear with me for a moment when I say that although we are always going to have this gradient operator here I'm just going to take it out for the moment and at the very end put it back in so I just want to manipulate the divergence now the next thing we need to note is the divergence like I said operates only on the unprimed coordinates so in the integral it only operates on the separation vector also as long as we keep the the dot product between f a function of r prime and the separation vector we can change its order and we're going to change its order like this but we're going to have 1 over 4 pi and then we're going to have the integral over the volume f a function of r prime dotted with the gradient of 1 over the magnitude of the separation vector all integrated to tau prime okay like I said we're just ignoring the other the other uh, the other nabla which we're going to bring back in at the very end now like I said earlier on we can swap this nabla here which operates on the the unprimed coordinates provided we adjust in a negative sign so we're going to have this with respect to the to the primed coordinates and we bring in a minus sign now the next thing we need to do is just note a small bit of the product rule so let's say for example I take minus the the grade or minus the uh, the gradient of a B we'll say what we're going to get actually they would be scalars they would be scalars so what we'll get is minus a dot the gradient of B which would now be a vector minus b dotted with the gradient of a which would now be a vector but if you look closely we have we'll say an a dotted with the gradient of a b so we can now rearrange the formula we have at the moment as follows it'll become two things you'll have minus 1 over 4 pi we're going to have our integral over the volume the gradient prime dotted with f a function of r prime divided by the magnitude of the separation vector integrated to tau prime plus 1 over 4 pi the integral over the volume and we're going to have this time 1 over the separation vector times the divergence prime we'll say the prime's divergence of f a function of r prime integrated to tau prime all right now just to close that off we're two lines away from the the completion here so the next thing we need to do is look at the divergence theorem which says if you take the integral over the volume of let's say a function small a like this and if we integrate it d tau that's over the volume we're going to get the closed surface integral of a dot da
So what I want to do is invoke the divergence theorem, but only on one of these components, namely the one on the left. And if you do that, I'm just going to clear the page, you'll get the following answer. Minus 1 over 4 pi, you're going to get the closed surface integral of f a function of r prime over the magnitude of the separation vector. That's going to be integrated dot dA prime. And we're going to have the other integral, plus 1 over 4 pi, the integral over the volume. And we're going to have 1 over the magnitude of the separation vector, the dotted, or we'll say the primed divergence of f a function of r prime d tau prime. And that's it. So this is, we'll say, that is equal to equation 1. So we're going to do something similar with equation 2. So we're going to get something like this. And when we look at it, we'll be able to get rid of one, two of the, the integrals, and we'll be left with one being a scalar vector, a scalar potential, which for electricity, electromagnetism, the, for electricity will be called, called V, and we'll be left with a magnetic vector potential for the magnetic field. Okay, so thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might also give me a comment on the comment box below.